Right, morning guys, welcome back to NZ Micro Rat with Customs. New video, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yesterday, um, finished the locks on the floor and then made the that trim for the front of the rear seat base. Um, if you're not sure and you haven't seen, and this is a new video, this thing here. So, I copied the profile as close as I possibly could off this. This is the front one, which I've obviously got to go through, clean up, and straighten out, and get ready for paint as well. So, this was my test piece. Um, and then I welded up the end of it just to make sure. Because I was a wee bit worried about, because the way it's cut off here and it's flat and it doesn't go around like that, obviously because <clears throat> the front seat is open on the sides because of the door, but the back seat's not. So it's just got the trim across the front because the rest is all upholstery. But I was a wee bit worried about if people were lifting it up and down, if this upholstery was close, um, which it will be, I was a bit worried about it maybe catching and, and rubbing and cutting and all those sorts of things, you know, over time. <clears throat> so I was trying to avoid that. So we welded the edge up like that and then, you know, went, rounded it off and whatever. And, and hopefully it won't cause any damage. Um, that's my, hopefully my plan. So that's what I've done. So now I've got to obviously just get that screwed onto here or whatever screwed nailed but i've obviously got to prep it for paint first so i'll get that one cleaned up and straightened up and i'll try and get that all the rust and crap off it Right, so I've given that a rough clean up, um, obviously on the outside, and then given it a quick wire wheel with that inside to get rid of the loose crap. But I'm going to go get in another couple of those poly discs, um, Scotch Brights, what do you want to call them, and give this another hit with a, with a fresh one and try and get this a bit cleaner, and then I might hit it with a Rolox and whatever. Um, if I can get it reasonable on the inside, I'm not panicked. I'll just Rust, rust treat it and whatever and and just you know get it cleaned up as much as possible and obviously when we uh you know if i rust treat and whatever it'll be fine but it's the outside surface i'm really panicked about because this stuff as long as it's clean and it's treated it'll be fine and yeah you know, obviously give it a scuff up and whatever and paint it but i really want the outside piece to be clean so then i can i can do a nice job on the outside um so yeah, so I'll go get another couple, couple of those stripper poly discs and give this another decent go on the outside and give it a quick whip round while it's got a nice sharp edge on the inside and try and knock the rest, the worst of the crap off the inside. Righty, so I got some scotch bright discs couple so I can clean that last of these bits up hopefully. Um, well, that anyway, 
and maybe some other bits and pieces. But still waiting on <laughs> still waiting on wheel and gearbox bearings. Um, they've got a massive this Timpkin book that's like this fucking thick <laughs> going through it and trying to work out these bearings. Um, so hopefully we'll get. They've obviously had to hunt this book down so we can try and see if we can get some fucking bearings to this thing. Um, excuse me, French, because I'm just, I'm getting a little bit annoyed of the waiting. Like it's been weeks now that we've been trying to find this stuff. Um, and the headlight bases with this um, curved bolt that's got a a slot in it, so or and not a slot in it, but a square in it, obviously with a curved base or ped so it can move in this thing. I'm still waiting on them to be made. Um, I think the tyre rod ends for the front steering are almost finished. They're being rebuilt. Um, not by them but some other people and the shaft of the gearbox is being is being made. Um, so that's cool. But yeah like oh, I just wish I could either have gearbox bearings or wheel bearings. Not that I can put the wheels on anyway, I haven't got them here, but at least have them. And I can probably work on that back diff. I think they're trying to sort out the diff bearings at the same time. Because um, I've got the part numbers there for that. I gave them a way while ago. I said I haven't pulled it stripped down this one yet, but um, it'd be just nice to have them so I can put it down, clean it up. And put it back together and we'll paint it and put the bastard in. Righty, so I've got this fairly well cleaned up now. Um, I tapped it with obviously another one of those clean new wheels and whatever. I've given it a fairly good to go on the inside. It's not dead perfect on the inside, but it's pretty good. I'm um, good enough now to at least treat the uh, surface and stuff. And obviously, I'll probably do the same on the outside. Because it's got a little bit of pitting to try and just get the last of that. And then we'll give it a final clean up and etch it and whatever. But I'll put a bit of that rust treatment stuff on there at least. Um, we'll do that in a minute. Um, and then I'll get the other one prepped. I actually want to roll, see if I can, the bottom edge of this piece. It's got quite a wee kick in it. I want to try and do that on that other piece as well. I can get that to kick over a little bit. Um, but I tried to do that on the uh, folder, but I just really need to, at some point, if I get a chance to set that up so it's got an even clamp pressure. So when I go to do little folds like that, you're know, grabbing it on a little piece, it's got consistent clamp pressure from one end to the other. And so when I go to fold something, you know, like a little edge like that and clamp it in so it's just inside but for the whole the rest of it sticking out and I can give it a wee tweak and bend. Um, but I might just have to sit um we want to the jang line and the uh, vice and just just hammer the edge over a little bit and just kick it over and do that. Um, yeah I'll get this sitting on one of the saw horses and I'll give it a, a quick flick over with some of that rust treatment converter stuff and then at least then we can give it another in a few hours we can give it another quick scuff over and clean up and, uh, and then get it ready to for the next step if you know what I mean so that's cool that was that one cleaned up and I'll attack that shortly so what I'm painting this with is is this it's a rust converter sort of primer in one it might be just easier than uh, just putting a rust converter in so that I don't, have to, don't have to really clean it off afterwards if you know what I mean except for give it a scuff on the outside to uh, prep for paint and primer but just a little bit on the brush and just paint away Basically, you know, we'll neutralise any of that surface rust and whatever. 
from it. Get them in all the nooks and crannies. Right, mow on the grass. Going to do some more. Get the last cut off before winter, I believe. So. Side as well, so we just tap these guys are shipping poles, which put it in just the outside, but I'll just give it a scuff back for the A uh, or something like that for a. Uh, Put some time on. Just a little bit of rough back. Probably hit it with uh, something fairly aggressive because this can be a bit, stuff can be a bit funny to get paint to attach to it properly afterwards. Um, so, what when it's green? Um, no, not very old, but if it's been on there a while, it can be shitty stuff. Any, any funny stuff it gets a real hard shine on it if you know what I mean and it just, the paint won't stick because it's meant to be like a one step primer where you just paint over top but if it's been on there a few days or a couple of weeks type thing you just won't nothing will stick to it it's just, it's, it's that, but it's good for Good for getting rid of treatment the rust, but you just gotta give it a hard scuff back where you want the paint to really stick on it. But at least that'll neutralize the rust. And considering it was really rusty, uh, at least it's now treated and clean and ready for the next step. Right. Naughty. So what they got going on at the moment let's turn that up. is the bend here, like the, this bend here, under here, wasn't very consistent. It was twisted. Um, so what I'm trying to do is actually straighten it out and pull the center of this. I've actually done a little bit, but I've just put some extra clamps in here with some bits of timber to try and help hold that in on that angle on. So I can just get this center piece to rock over a little bit better, to get it a little bit straighter. So I'm just going to get the block of wood and we're just using a smaller hammer but I'm going to grab, grab a slot, something a little bit more wallop. I've just, I've started cleaning this up and I was like, I've just rolled the edge a little bit. You know, just looking down it was like, no, it's, it's had a bit of twist, a bit of a twist in it. It's not too bad now, I'll straighten it out a bit. I might just give it another wee bash. It's not too bad now. I think I'll probably get it to be honest. But yeah, it was quite sticky. Like from here to here, it was probably up. I don't know, like an eighth of an inch sort of type thing here, probably. Yeah. So we'll let it go now and we'll just see what it looks like there. That other thing would have been probably run through a uh, series of rollers or something like that to make it originally. Uh, it would have, I don't know, so you might have went through like sort of 10, like sort of form rollers and it would have slowly got into that shape. They would have just run it out in big lengths and then cut it off to whatever length they want, wanted and put it, pulled it around a mould and shrunk it and whatever. Uh, 
and to fit where the seat basically wants to use it on. Yeah, it's better now. Yeah, that seems better. Sorry. Kind of sits in there. Yeah, kind of. It's actually a little bit. Um, I wish. I'm not going to worry about remaking it because by the time you get the seat cover and this painted and the carpet on and everything, you're not really going to really notice it. But I wish it was just slightly. I wish this was probably up a quarter of an inch um, higher, this piece. Um, but it doesn't really matter. It's not a it's not a biggie, you know what I mean? Um, it would have been nicer if it had been slightly better, but I think the probably part of it is probably it's probably slipped here too because that clamp pressure is not probably the best in the centre. It's probably slipping out here as it's turning it. Or is it I don't think it's as, I think it's got more gap here than it has up here. So it appears to be short on this. But should be right. We'll keep gripping it for paint and get it etched. Oh, that's that etched, and that's that one treated. So that one's still drying, it's not far away from being dry. Well, you know what I mean? It's got a wee bit of drying to do yet. And uh, another one's all prepped and ready to go, I guess. I might just give that another wee touch with the etch. Let's give it another couple touch-ups anyway. But anyway, um, so it's those two peaks is cleaned up and almost ready to go for primer and whatever. So that one there, once it's dry, I'll just give it a light scuff for primer. This one here needs to dry and then we can DA the outside of it. And I want to make sure it's clean. And obviously over the edge a little bit and whatever. I'm not quite too panicked about the inside of it. We'll just give it a light scuff with some sandpaper or something. And then we'll prime that. I might, I might etch the outside of it and then prime it, if you know what I mean. Um, because by the time I etch it, it'll probably take a lot of that rust converter stuff off. But it'll still be in the pores, so. It's funny crap. But anyway. So it's size bit sorted. So when I come back after lunch, because it's about 10 to, I will work out what I'm going to play with next. Because I could probably prime these stuff, but I don't have enough to prime. Like I'm not going to mix up some two-pack to prime that for just those two things. So, yeah, I'll work out what I'm going to work on next and see where I'm heading. Righty, I'll catch you later on. Righty. So at the moment, um, I'm, I'm going to make the firewall piece shortly, but I'm just having a wee play with this rubber um, to make these bump stops that go on here. Uh, whatever way it is. So this is a really old, hard, crusty one. Yeah, it's probably 100 years old. <laughs> so I've just made one out of this, cutting a piece of this down. And this is bloody near perfect, to be honest. It's not quite, but it's it's about as good as I'm going to get for dimensions, if you know what I mean. The cut a piece, cutting them out of... It's bloody near spot on, really, for that. If it was straight down, it would be even better. But you wouldn't have to worry about cutting it or cutting this piece off or whatever. But I've got one in here. I may cut it down a little bit more. 
Let's take you over to the car. We'll show you what's going on here. Right, so I've got one in here. I didn't even have to take this off to get it in. <laughs> um, well, just zoom it out a little bit. Can I zoom it out a little bit? Hold on. All right, that's better. So, yeah, I'm just thinking about maybe just cutting it down a little bit more this way. It's poking out enough the other way, I think. It's nice and soft. Um, it's about, you know, I can dress it up a little bit more and just roll the edges a little bit and all that, whatever. Um, sort of got to be careful because it will grind away pretty quick. So I've just, I just um, took the big taper off it with the uh, disc on that. Just rubbed it on it a couple of times while it was spinning and it cut it down pretty quick. So I think if you just roll, take the edges off, just smooth it off maybe. Maybe just grind it down a little bit more and just round the back edge of that off. I think it'd be perfect. It comes out pretty easy. Um, whether I make it just a little bit longer too, I don't know. This way, just so it's a little bit tighter fit. But it fits in there pretty easy. Uh, well, which way to round it off? have that. <laughs> Me pretty easy. Yeah, I don't want it to fall out too easy, that's the other thing. Yeah. Get that way. So we can get it back in there. Oh, put the phone down. <laughs> oh, you might better see your pocket back in here. So it's possibly a little soft for rubber too, but I guess with age it'll harden up a little bit. I might just make them a little bit longer. I might just make them a little bit slightly fatter so it's got to squash up and be a wee bit tighter, if you know what I mean. But it works pretty good. You get the idea anyway. So yeah, I might just make it a little bit longer, just to make it a bit tighter in there, not come out so easy. But the door closes quite nicely on it and lots of stuff. So I think that's about as good as it's going to get, you know, with a wee bit of a trim up and whatever. I just might make them a little bit longer. I need eight. I need two for each door. Yeah, two for each door, so I think. So I need to make eight of these. So this was my sort of a first piece. Um, I got plenty. I'm sure it's going to be make eight. Right? Yeah, uh, I can have a few failures, but yeah. So I might just make another one and just make it a little a sneak longer because I sort of made it quite tight to what those bits were. Um, but I might just make it a hair longer and. Just a little bit fatter this way, if you know what I mean. So that's a wee bit tighter in here. Man, freaking whatever that is. I don't know if it's deer or it's um, bulls over there freaking balling the way. I think it might be bulls. Um, but anyway, yeah, make another one and then just see. I just wanted to have a play just to see how well it worked. But then I'll get back to uh, making the foil piece. But yeah, I think I'll just make it a little bit longer. Just so it's more bit more squashed up and I'll, I'll shape it but I'll use this one if if I don't need to use it I won't use it but um, yeah I think it'll do the job though I think it'll work quite well you don't want it too hard but you know what to be able to be knocked out too easy though either I may have to uh, put a little bit of glue in here on the painted ones to help hold it in. But see it's a little bit loose in there. So that's why I thought make I might just make it a little bit longer so it's a bit snugger, tighter fit. Um, so it's a little bit more if I make it yeah, just a little bit fatter and whatever. Maybe make these pieces here a little, a little bit fatter too. So it's a little bit in there, a little bit snugger and harder and then it's least likely to get pulled out 
with somebody's arm or something brushing past it or body brushing past it. Anyway, I'll have another wee play up there and uh, we'll come back to this. Righty, so I've made another one and I've cut enough pieces to make eight um, and I've still got that left and that one, that first one I made. But this is my second one. Now I've made it very marginally longer, just a little bit longer. It's kind of hard to tell, but uh, where are we? You might better tell it's very slightly longer. It is a little bit longer. I've made these pieces a bit thicker, so they don't move around so much. Not, I haven't made them any deeper that way, or maybe slightly. Mate, yeah, they're about the same. So yeah, I've just fattened it up a little bit, and it is quite a bit tighter in there. If I poke it in this piece. So that's the original one. So it was a bit loose. This one here is uh, it's quite snug in there. So I think that looks. I'm gonna get it right in. <laughs> so when that's pushed against the back of the bodywork, it'll poke it out a bit too. So I think that's not bad. I think that's pretty good for what I, what I need. Um, so yeah, that's cool. At least I know that is going to work really well. I don't think I don't think that'll get pushed. Yeah, I don't think it's going to get pushed out or knocked out or anything like that. Whereas I think that one there, being just a little bit you know a little bit sloppy and not having enough in these, but not being quite fat enough either. I think that there would quite easily get pulled out. Yeah, see, I can pull that out. Whereas that one there, I probably put, could have pushed it out, but I was having to try. Yeah, like I'm, yeah, like that's taking some effort to try and push it around. It's not trying to pull out, you know what I mean? So that's, I think, is about where it needs to be. So at some point, I'll make some more, but I'm happy with my first little couple of test pieces, um, samples, so yeah, that's cool, and I've got plenty there, I've got enough to probably make another, oh, what have I got now, enough for another, maybe four, yeah, I've probably got enough for another four, if, if I happen to have a couple of fails when I make them, so I've got plenty left, so I've got eight cut there now, including that one. Yeah, and I've got enough there for another four if I need them. So um, I'll try and find out what that was if somebody wants to know. But that come from <laughs> the home of the world's fastest Indian. E. Hayes and Sons down here. Man, they've got some stuff in there. They've got all sorts of all sorts of things in there that are just you know, you can just walk up and you know, okay, I'll take a meter of that or whatever and or a couple of feet of that. All sorts of funny rubbers and bolts and screws and nuts and all sorts of stuff, plus tools. Plus they've got, got a gift shop for women and bits and all sorts of stuff in there. There's a huge car and bike collection in there, including both Burt and Rose bikes. He had a, uh, a valve set that he modified and raced to, as well as the Indian. Um, it's not actually really mentioned in the uh, movie. It's a shame they didn't have that bike in the movie too. <laughs> um, that would have been quite cool just to, just to even have the real one in there um, as a back piece. And, you know, some people could have said, oh, what's that? Oh, that's my other bike, you know, they might have fine, but I'm working on this one at the moment type thing. Um, that would have been quite interesting because, yeah, it was for, for a single one, I think I'm not sure capacity and speed he had that up to too, but... It was well in excess of 100 miles an hour. Um, but anyway, I'll get marking out this firewall thing. And, um, yeah, and then I'll come back. Once I've got that marked out and cut out, I might come back and do these if I've got enough time this afternoon. So, yeah, we'll carry on. That's a success. That's cool. Righty. So, I've got this firewall piece here. It's got a multiple... 
a multitude of holes in it, different sizes. So basically, I found drills to fit most of these holes, and then obviously some hole saws to fit almost spot on to fit the other ones. Um, and hopefully that'll fit there too, is it? And one of these will be fine. Draw a hole down through there, dial through there, so I can cut slots in that. So I think it's probably easy now. I've got this clamp here, it's not going to move. I can just go through and just drill all these holes, cut them all before I cut the outside off, and then it's, I don't have to worry about it basically. And I've, all I've got to do is come along with a jigsaw and just cut out a couple of little slotty pieces that are. So I don't even know if it's meant to be like that. I think it's meant to just be holes in there. So, yeah, I'll just drill them out and be done with it. So, I think. You use this, this drill here for the smaller stuff. Clean up around the edges, give the back a bit of a scuff off and uh, knock all the dags and stuff off the back and then make make these two little bits or I can get them off. I might be able to reuse them. They reckon. <laughs> reuse a bit of the original. See if we can get them off. See if we can get them off. It'd be quite cool to use a bit of the original. Anyway, we'll give that a clean up from the back. And uh, yeah, see if we can use them again. Look like they're in pretty good nick. So they are. It'd be quite cool to have a little piece of the original on there. Alrighty. Next. Alrighty. So, yeah, I reused the original pieces, unscrewed it, laid that back over top, drilled the holes, and screwed the original screws back in there. Um, the only thing um, I haven't done is allow for these rivets. And to be honest, I'm guessing it's probably for some sort of insulation pad or something like that, I'm guessing. But I'm not 100% sure, so I haven't done that yet, but it's not hard to pulled it out and worked it out later on but I think that's pretty much good um, I have to double check to make sure that gap's big enough for the wheel for the handbrake that pokes through there with the cable at some point but yeah I'll go test fit, fit that in the car and make sure it does fit it should do because it's exactly the same as that 
Um, it might be a, a smidge bigger in areas, but most of those places aren't going to matter. Um, so, yeah. I think that was the easiest way to do it, just lay it over top, clamp it down, find the drills or hole saws that were the right size and just push them through and drill the holes out and away we go. So, yeah, cool. And use the original bits of wood and bits of hardware off there, so that's pretty cool. It's nice to have a, the old original piece in there if you can use it. Yeah, like if this probably wasn't quite so tatty, you probably could have used that too. It's a bit like the uh, floorboards. Probably could have used them too, but with having that little bit of bore in them, it doesn't make that very safe. It could break at some point. So it's a nice fresh timber in there. It's not going to hurt any. So, But that's that done. So I might go back to making rubber bump stops. I'll just give this a quick test fit and make sure it does fit. But I think we're about done with that one. Where are we at? 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 Where We'll carry on with rubber bump stops for the doors. And that'll probably be my day done by the time I finish carving all them out. So when I'm using this to knock the edges off, I'm barely touching. It's just enough to just to brush it over. I'm hardly, hardly using any pressure force. Like I used a little bit to obviously knock the back off and just to touch up the front, just to knock it back a little. Um, but the rest of it when I'm going around these edges, just to round it off a little, I'm just barely, just brushing over, if you know what I mean. So when that's now, if this was screwed down, um, just, just clamp it down to give you an idea, kind of. If you can see that, which I'll turn it. Turn it that way. So these guys can see. So if that's pulled down, like it would be screwed down, that looks quite, looks quite nice, natural. Um, you know, after it's after it's weathered a little bit and. All those sorts of things. Nobody's ever going to know that 
on my bin, basically. You know, with a little bit of weathering, you know, over time and whatever. Um, you know, it's nobody will ever know. I just think that was factory, you know. Like that's and that's probably what that was like, you know. It was probably I don't know, it might have been a little bit harder than those, but like that's gotta be damn hard now compared with what it ever was in the first few years of its life, you know, that's I'm guessing the original out of it hundred almost a hundred years old, so that's you know, it's got to be way harder than it ever was. And I'd imagine it would have been probably not maybe that soft, but something like that, you know, and what does it matter? You know, it's, it's doing its job, looks good, um, and most people would, will never even know that it wasn't the original thing, you know. So, yeah, I'll carry on making these. And, uh, yeah, might pop them in if I can, maybe, we'll see. Yep.